All right, we are doing a, this is a kind of an interesting gig we're gonna be trying to do because Jamie and I, we work together on some other projects and we often stay at, at the same property uh, when we travel for business. So we're gonna do these simultaneous reviews where uh, I do one my take and Jamie take, does his take. And this first one is the Hyde Regency O'Hare. And after we both stayed and put out our reviews, this is the conclusion video, video of the Hyatt Regency O'Hare, uh, Chicago. Uh, so, Jamie, um, check-in was a little bit of a uh, shit show. We're talking about 20 to 30 people ahead of us and uh, only like one or two desk clerks working there. And we lucked out because somebody came out and manned the globalist one after about 10 minutes. But if not, we're talking the, the general line there was probably half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, so, and this hotel has, what, a thousand, uh, almost 1,100 rooms. I looked it up yesterday. It was kind of a, an interesting sight uh, that we haven't seen in a while. Yeah, that, that line was, was long at check-in. And I've seen it many times at this hotel where, you know, they get a lot of distressed passengers, canceled flights, right, combined with a conference, combined with just people normally staying there. I've actually found lines there uh, quite a few other days, even pre-COVID. But, you know, you speak of the globalist line there. I actually, when I was in line, I had to prompt someone to help me. So that person didn't willingly come out to say, hey, you know, are you a globalist? Or are you an elite? You know, can I help you? He was actually helping uh, airline employees check in and, and multitasking with some Uber drivers and whatnot. So I don't know that he was actually necessarily manning that desk. I kind of just, you know, sort of forced him into it. Um, so they right. definitely need okay. some more staffing. Yeah, because I, was, I wasn't paying attention. I was like, screw this. I'm going to sit down for a while and have a drink before, right. uh, <laughs> before we, we start working on that line. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean I, at the end of the day, it's like, well, it's a big hotel. But honestly, I mean, you should, when you know that you have 1,100 rooms and you know that it's full house for that night, the first night we were there, almost full house, um, and they, uh, but, you know, and normally I would say that they're pretty good with upgrades. Yeah, I've gotten some some two story suites there. There's this weird one with a spiral staircase a bunch yeah, of yeah, times yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, this time they claim they were sold out, and I'll buy it. There was a convention of what were they cheerleaders was, or something plus the out. travel show. Yeah, yeah, I think the sh travel the sh travel show that we were on, but I also think that there was like there were a lot of vouchers I saw. So people mm -hmm. obviously got sent there from O'Hare, right? So uh, yeah, no, so so. Um, uh, you, I, I know which room you're talking about. It is in the old uh, area, like the area that I was in, the main building. Uh, so it's kind of like the round rotunda thing. That's where those two-story uh, suites are. <laughs> it's kind of useless. You're never downstairs anyway. So I, I remember the last time I was there, you, there's a door to get out on the upper level. Mm -hmm. So I kind of just went out there instead of... So that's the ninth and 10th floor. Right. But I mean, at the end of the day... Uh, that's a business hotel. It's not really, I mean, I find those bi-level things helpful uh, when Melinda and I are, when she, cause she gets up so early in the morning and I don't, so she'll go down and do something there and then I'll stay upstairs. So I think yeah. those are, are fine. And also the executive wing that you were in, that room looked pretty good. Yeah. Th those are supposedly the remodeled rooms. And when he told me a check-in, you know, you've been upgraded. It was to a remodeled room versus the one you were in. Uh, right. Nothing, you know, overly fancy. I actually noted in my video that I thought some of the tiling in the bathroom was the original tile. So I, I think maybe in some portions of the room, they may have kept some of the old features just maybe as a cost cutting move. Uh, right. But it was certainly a normal, you know, new Hyatt Regency room. Uh, but I think that a good tip is to uh, have people ask for the room in the executive wing, because that's, mm -hmm. that's the good one. It's also more quiet over there. I mean, I don't, you don't hear the airplanes as much, especially if you had on the, if you're on the South side of it or South East side of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I, I, there's a lot more noise in the building that I was in and their the room is like comically small. It was just the bathroom is like a cruise bathroom, cruise cabin bathroom. It's, it's very, very tiny. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about the service, though. So we, we noticed that they've cut back. They don't have valet parking in a hotel that's crowded and full and has over a thousand rooms. No valet parking is offered. Uh, they did not offer uh, the room service was changed before the pandemic. They, they discontinued all the room service with, you know, uh, plates and, and, and forks and knives and things like that and you can order off a menu, it's only for the order. Should we call it a Starbucks? Yeah, whatever that cafe is in the, on the lobby there. 
So it's like a coffee shop where they have pre-made sandwiches and pre-made this and pre-made that. Uh, they had some things that they make. They just put it in the oven, it, but it's like a Starbucks oven. So they discontinued. I think 2017 or 2018, they started doing that and they bring it to you. And I, I don't even think they brought it to me. I think I have to go down and pick it up. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know that I've stayed at that hotel since COVID. So I do the last time I was there, the club was open. So I just had breakfast in there. Right. Um, I think that we got in really late one evening and I think it was closed. And I think also, um, I wanted to order something, whatever it was. And I think I had to go pick it up. I'm not sure. I'm not going to. I'm not going to say that for certain, but it, it's definitely coffee shop food that's been laying around for a while. It's nothing fresh right. that's made um, and nice. And that's kind of the breakfast, too. So the club is closed. Um, will it open, you think? It's anyone's guess at this point. Uh, but but what I do think is that the breakfast offering is um, that that had been picked over the restaurant that we went to, right? There was stuff that were out, they were out of bagels, there was stuff for sitting there was cold or, or warm when it should have been and, you know, that kind of stuff. So I don't know right. whether the club itself will return, but I think whatever they're doing now is not exactly a, a full replacement. No, I, I think that the club is fine. They got an espresso machine in there. They got bottles of water that you can bring with you. You can get yeah. a, a soda, you can get a whatever, all sorts of various things that they have in there. Uh, yogurt is pretty good. They had it in a real bowl, not those black this plastic thing is the, the, bre the general breakfast. And also they back in a day that also has been gone for a few years. They were also having a happy hour where you can get a glass mm -hmm. of wine and also mm -hmm. something that was fairly decent as well. Now they charge, you know, nine bucks or whatever for uh, for uh, for cannabis. And uh, but obviously it's not even open anymore. Um right. So you have the lobby bar, you have the coffee shop in the corner, and then you have the restaurant that's not a restaurant anymore. It is just for breakfast and no menu and the lowest quality junk I think I've ever seen. This was like a Winco, uh, you know, type of uh, overstock crap. And the, the pineapple was white and the bread was stale and everything, you know, there was, it was not replenished. It was cold. They had one guy work in the restaurant. Plus the chef, the chef was making like omelets and things, but you could see from that egg mixture that he was putting in it, that that's really not, uh, you know, I, I, I made some eggs uh, when I got home uh, yesterday morning. Um, and, you know, it's, you can taste the difference in that. It was just the saddest thing I ever saw. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the other thing, we were talking about this before, that when we checked into the restaurant, they've got this new procedure where I guess you have to sign the receipt before you go in just because mm -hmm. of COVID, they check your card. You know, somehow when we checked out of the hotel, they had added an arbitrary tip on each of the, the uh, bills. And, you know, I'm all for tipping. Random. I don't want someone to select it for me, right? Or put down a number that I don't know about. And the other thing is that it's a buffet, right? There really was no one there to tip. It was just a buffet line that you go get your food at, right? There wasn't a, an actual service. No one brought me coffee or juice or anything like that. So that's a little annoying that this hotel is clearly going rogue and adding, you know, miscellaneous right. charges. Right. No, I, I don't know what the hell that was. It was on all of our checks and it was also like 28 cents. It was right. just so weird. Uh, I don't know what, what the story is. Maybe they have to put a minimal in. We'll figure it out because, but you know, all of our checks for the, for the five rooms that we had uh, for, for us and for staff uh, had like 18 cents, 29 cents yeah. or whatever different tips for the restaurant yeah. for all of them, uh, which I thought was um, probably a mistake at best. But since it, all, it wasn't all, uh, all of the rooms, that, I don't think so. It, it's something that they added. I mean, did they think that people don't check their bill or whatever? It's well, you know, the weird thing is, is that you sign the receipt before you go into the restaurant, right? I've never really been in an environment where you tip before you've even received any service, right? Mm -hmm. So no one brought me anything, but but somehow someone added the tip, I guess, as I walked in. Anyway, it could be a mistake. It could not be, but I guess we'll find out if we ask for those to be, you know, refunded. Uh, it's, it's lame. It is just, uh, it's just, uh, and I, I honestly think that this hotel can do a lot better. I mean, was, so we, we talk about the rate you are, you were obviously qualified for a much lower rate than I was. Uh, but at the end of the day, I would say that the average for this hotel is probably from 130 to 150 is normal price. It was 190 was the member rate for the weekend. We were there because it was full. 
multiply that up with a thousand rooms when it's full and uh, rock and roll, baby. Let's say that the right. average is 130, even with the, re the relief race for the Air Force people are, who, are, uh, who are stuck and stuff. Right. I don't know. I think that they need to do a lot better than what they're doing. I think that yeah. it's uh, it's that place is uh, I'm giving it a thumbs down. I think we're we this is not what Hyatt would like to uh, show off as the you know, it's supposed to be like the number one airport hotel. And, and it is size wise, but it's sure. very sad. No room service. The breakfast sucks um, and uh, lots of COVID crap. And also that Vicky, she got uh, food poisoning food on poisoning. Friday night at the mm -hmm. at the restaurant, yeah. Which uh, and, and the, other... was the only meal she had before she left her right. since she left her house, and and it had to be that. And she was flat right. out all of Sunday. Sure. Um, no Saturday, I mean. So that's yeah. I don't know. I, I I just a lot of people I know. A lot of people stay there. A lot of our followers, uh, FGU fans and FGU community, our friends, they stay there. It's it's a good. I think the conclusion should be. A great place, a place to crash overnight, but get out of there as soon as you can. Yeah. I, I mean, for us, we were at that convention right across the walkway there. So, I mean, it's fine finding another hotel that's going to do that. You know, probably yeah. not. You know, well, the walkway the from the Hilton is, is much shorter. So yeah. I say we go for next year. We'll try that instead. How about that? There you go. <laughs> I'm all for it. Go to Gibson's. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> that's the Chicago O'Hare, um, Hyde Regency Chicago O'Hare or Hyatt Regency O'Hare Chicago is the correct yeah. name of the property. Uh, guys, if you're watching, do better. This is not good enough for what gets delivered. And when it's full house, it's not COVID anymore. That's a, that's it's not an excuse when you have over a thousand rooms that are filled filled uh, unless they have parts of the uh, of the hotel locked off. But the number of people we saw, I find that highly unlikely that that's the case. Uh, all right. Uh, anything you need to add, to, want to add to that? I think that's it. All right. Thanks, everybody. And the next one we're doing simultaneous will be probably out in L.A. Uh, we'll try to figure something out there, what we're doing, but we'll do a simultaneous reward, uh, 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 review. Uh, comment in the sections below if you want to, if you like it or if you want to do any changes to things. Um, and we're also uh, working on making uh, like more of a standard thing for each of the roofs that we have. So, so you can get a consistency on that and adding some graphic that's also coming up since a lot of people are actually watching this uh, dribble. Thanks, guys. And we'll see you soon. Thanks.